In the last video I showed how to export the PCB design as a CSV file so that that file could be imported into the pick and place machine. There is however another item that we need to take care of before we can actually put the board into the pick and place machine and that is the alignment of the board into the machine. As with any manufacturing process there are tolerances, errors, discrepancies between the actual design and what is manufactured. There are also of course um, inaccuracies in the machine itself. Now that means that you can't just take the design, take the coordinates that are in the CSV file and use it as it is. There will need to be some kind of alignment and correction to make sure that each of the components is placed in the right place. This becomes more apparent as the component sizes you're using get smaller. For example, if you're using 0805 resistors, you can be far more tolerant of errors than you can if you're using 402s, for example, uh, which are only about a quarter of the size. How precise you need to be depends on the board um, design, the size of the board, the machine accuracy, that sort of thing. And it's something that you need to experiment with with your particular machine, especially the lower cost machines. There are two basic methods you can use for aligning the board. One is the board itself. For example, you could use the corners of the board as alignment points. That's not a good idea. You need to look at a board as a series of layers, um, top copper, bottom copper, silt screen, but also the board itself. Now they're all manufactured as separate layers where the individual layers are overlaid in separate processes within the manufacturing cycle. And each of those layers, when it's laid down, can have small errors. And the net result is the errors in the final production board can not only vary from board to board within a batch, but from production batch to production batch. So in other words, if the uh, routing of the board um, varies slightly, if you're using the corner of the board as your reference point, then you'll get uh, errors from board to board, which is obviously not going to be um, conducive to good results, especially with small components. So while you can use the corner of the board, I recommend you don't. You can also use components on the board. So in other words, you could take uh, one of these uh, resistors and use that as the reference point. You then take another resistor in another part of the board and use that as another reference point and use those to align with the machine. Again, it's, it works, but it's not a particularly accurate way of doing that. Also, it, it kind of depends on who's going to manufacture the board and what equipment they have. A lot of modern industrial uh, pick and place machines will auto locate the board and they will do that using uh, markers on the board called fiducials. So I've added some on this board just to show you what these are and they're what we will use to align this board in the pick and place machine. So if I zoom in, this is a fiducial. It's really just a, a marker. Uh, in this case, it's on the copper layer. In fact, it's on both top and bottom copper layers. You could, in theory, put them on the silt screen, but again, as I said earlier, because the different layers of the board are laid down separately, it's not a good idea to put it on the silt screen because the silt screen position can vary slightly with relation to the copper layer. So in other words, if you were to align on the fiducial that was on the silt screen layer, you might find that you had an offset between that and the copper layer. Also, it might not be um, perfectly overlaid on the copper layer, so you might have an offset but also an angular displacement as well. Essentially, you can make fiducials in various forms. I use a one millimeter circle and uh, you'll, once we get onto the machine you'll see what it's used for. But you need at least two, preferably three. And the important thing here is that the reference points you use, in this case it's, it's down here where the, the P is, um, is effectively in the imaginary corner of the board. So if you extended the edges of the board that's where they would meet. Um, and that is the reference point that the pick and place machine we're using will use to identify all the rest of the locations. So in other words, if we look at a particular component, so if we look at this component, you'll see that the position values 
are given relative to this datum point. Now that brings us on to another important point when you're designing these boards. If all you're doing is having the board made, sending the Gerbers to the board manufacturer and then manufacturing by hand, you can just continue irrespective of the actual center locations of the components because it doesn't matter. But if you remember when we output the CSV file, we output the locations of each of the components in that file. Those locations are the defined origins of the components. So what I mean by that is it's not necessarily the center of the components. It depends on how you define the component. And in fact, on the CAD system I have here, I had to go through and move all the datum points because they were centered on one of the pads rather than the center of the components, which means that in the pick and place machine, the machine would be placing the component effectively on the center of the pad and not on the center of the component. And you can't easily correct that just by putting an offset into the machine because obviously unless every single component is offset in the same way and unless all the components are laid at the same angle you will get um, the error going first one way and then the other. So in this particular CAD system then if we look at the PCB symbols if I open this one you can see this um, S with a cross is the, uh, the origin for the component. And as I said, when I got this CAD system, they were on the center of the pad, and that means that there will be an offset between the, cent the actual center of the component for placement and where the component thinks it is on the board. So if you look at the component and you put the mouse cursor over the center, this is currently giving us a location of 7.6 uh, in the X direction from the origin and 14 in the Y direction. If we open the properties, you can see that's actually where it's showing because the datum point in the component is in the center of the component. So you need to check that to make sure that that is true for all the components that you intend to use on your pick and place design. I suggest you do that before you start laying out tracks because if you change it afterwards, obviously it's going to bump the component in one direction or the other and you'll have to relay the board. Okay, so once you've decided um, what method you're going to use, you need to decide where you're going to put these uh, markers and you do need to know where they are because you've got to tell the machine where they are. So put them in defined places and again it's relative to the origin of the board. So if we look at this particular one, this is the information that we're going to need later on on the machine. So it's offset 5 in the x direction, 8 in the y direction from the uh, board origin. I've actually done one in each corner, but as I said, you can get away with two as long as they are diagonally opposite. And um, I actually put four on these boards just so I've got a choice as to exactly how I align it, depending on the results that I get. So once you have these, make a, a note of where they are. And we will need that once we get to the board. So we've got this file exported already with all the correct locations in the CSV file. And as I said before, it is important those locations are referenced relative to the origin of the uh, board itself, because that's the reference origin that the machine will use. Okay, so let's go and look at the machine and see how to align this board into the correct locations and how to tell the pick and place machine exactly where the board is on the machine. Okay, so here we are at the machine. I've mounted the board in the machine clamps. What I've actually done here, as you can see, is print off the board design onto paper, and I've taped that paper to the board itself. And that's just to make it easier to see. It's a bit uh, unclear if we look at the board. This will make sure that the cameras can see it more clearly when I try to show you the results on the screen. Now, if we look closely, you can see that we have the producibles in the corners uh, of the board. And that's what we need to align the machine to. But the machine origin is in this bottom left-hand corner, so it's actually right down in this corner. And this board has a cutout in this corner, and if we were actually running this as a uh, production run, what we would do is we would 
flip the board upside down in the CAD system and run it upside down so that the corner of the board could fit right into the uh, origin slot of the machine. I've left it this way up for this demonstration just so we can see more clearly what's going on but just bear in mind you do need to have some way of accurately locating the board uh, if you're doing more than one board. If you're only doing one board it doesn't really matter uh, but if you've got multiple boards to run you don't want to have to realign the machine between each board. Okay so the board is in the machine. We now need to tell the software where the board is relative to the machine origin. So if we go to the board work file, I'm just pointing the camera at the screen here as you can see so apologies for the um, poor uh, quality of the video. One point I'd make here is as with any CNC machine it's best not to put anything more onto the PC than you absolutely need. Uh, so I don't have any screen capture software on this machine. Uh, the reason for that is Windows is a bit uh, flaky at the best of times and most of the problems you'll like to have with software is if you have other things running on the machine. So if you're halfway through a long run and the machine decides to uh, upgrade itself or put in a bug fix from Windows then it'll obviously kill the entire program. So um, it's best to have as few components on the PC as possible and to turn off all updates. In fact this machine is not even connected to the network which is the best way to run them. Okay so go to the board design work file. This is the, the file that we created in the last video and we go to edit and you can see there's a tab here called PC Calibrate. So if we go to that, if you remember I said we need to keep track of the Fiducial locations that we've created and that's what we have here. So I've entered these already so to edit them you just enter the X and Y coordinates for all three points that you want to use. You need to make sure they're in the right order uh, otherwise you'll get some weird behavior from the machine so when you go to actually calibrate you'll see that they're in these locations uh, and you need to make sure that your um, your markers on your board are in the same locations. As I said you can select components if you want to instead and the machine will generally pick components for you but you can override that and pick your own. But to calibrate all you do is you click on each one in turn <coughs> and you'll see that what it's done is drive to where it thinks the marker should be and as you can see there is a small error so all you do is you put the crosshairs right over the marker, set, do the next and you just do that for all three points. Set that one, go to the third one and do it again. So the purpose of having three is it corrects the errors in all three directions so both the scale errors and the rotational errors will be corrected at the same time. Okay so once you've done that you can check that you're in the right place. If you go to any components, click on edit, you can then use the coordinate set. This is really meant to allow you to define exactly where the components are if you want to layer them out manually but there's a good tool for checking where the machine thinks individual components are and as you can see we're right in the center of that one and you can just check any number of components that you want to across the board check each one and make sure that each time it moves to the center of the components that we are interested in so do that on components spread across the board so do that for components across the board each corner and the center make sure that they are all Correctly located in the center of the crosshairs. If they're not, then you need to check the calibration of the board and make sure it's right. Once you've done that, you're good to load the reels and run the job. One point to make here is that when you calibrate the board, the machine knows roughly how far apart these points should be because of the geometry of the machine. So if you have Stones 
errors popping up when you try to calibrate, then most likely you've got a mismatch between the markers that you've got on the board and the the actual board itself, that's the actual physical size. It's not a very useful error, it nearly always says um, PC origin not set. So if you get that message popping up and just check that you've put the right locations in, the X and Y coordinates for each of the points. Also if you've got any of these reversed, so if you've got this point down here and this point up here for example, then you'll get the same error message. It just basically always says PC origin not set. Um, so if you get that message, just make sure that everything's in the right order and where it uh, is expected. And they need to be laid out as is shown in this diagram. Okay, so that's it. Once you've made those checks and everything lines up as it should do, the next step is to get the reels loaded and to run the board which we'll do in the next video.